What is going on YouTube? You're here from MJ Tech today, coming finally with a review that you guys have been anticipating here for the Vitashi Titan. This is the 2022 model that I got from TXPowerSports.com. And just like with any other bike out there, I did change a couple of things with this particular one, uh, mainly to make it run smoother and more reliable. So the first thing I did here was replace the uh, stock tires uh, with the Dunlop. These are the Sportmax GPR 300s. I did also the same thing here for the front tire and I got them professionally balanced. And now the bike doesn't, uh, I call it the hopping effect. It doesn't hop as you are riding it and it makes it a lot safer. The second thing I did in which I have right here so that you guys can see it is that I replaced the spark plug with the NGK Iridium. This is the number 2202, or you can go with a longer name on it. I have left the uh, link down below. So that it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to find it. And I gapped it at 0 0.030. It is very important that you guys gap it correctly, otherwise it won't work. And yes, I replaced the spark plug. Uh, second, I was getting stalling issues with this bike and I went and replaced here the T-MAP sensor. I got it from Amazon. It is about 60 bucks. And uh, yeah, this seems to be a better made, possibly the original uh, T-MAP sensor. And it is 100% recommended that you guys buy it. For some reason, the one with the orange label seems to be working better than the one with the black or white label only. Uh, I always have uh, better results uh, with this particular one. And the last thing I did was replace here the filter box. Uh, this is more of a mod that was done to it. I went ahead and replaced the box. The box is actually sitting right here. This thing, guys, is very restricted even when you blow from the ends you can feel that air restriction uh, not only that but this thing when in, it is installed the hose here that gets connected to the intake is actually cramped up like this and is preventing more airflow from going through and we don't have to be Einstein to know that that will make the bike run slower so if you remove those two screws that I just removed now all you have to do is just pull out this plastic and this is the mod right here. You guys can see that this is a one of those cheap Canyon style filters. You can go a little bit fancier. The opening here for the intake is 45 millimeters. You guys can see that not only does it look cleaner, but the bike breathes a lot better. A lot of people ask me what did I do with that hose, the uh, vacuum hose that was uh, connected to the uh, air box and well it is just dangling around what I did is that I got it close here to the filter so that things can still flow a little bit but I will eventually put a cap on it and just eliminate it as well it doesn't do anything uh, right now and so yes this is what I end up doing uh, to the bike to make it run smoother uh, the brakes are squealing already so I will have to see what brake pads do fit and hopefully on a separate video I can show you guys uh, how to get that done. Right now on this bike we have uh, give or take I think it's almost 300 miles, 266 miles on it. So at 300 miles I had to replace the oil that I put on it and the recommended oil. You can go with any brand, it doesn't matter, but it has to be uh, 10W40. And in this case, I used the Mobile One branded, very easy to find, full synthetic, and it works like a charm. Never had any issues using that particular oil. So with this being said, guys, let's go on for a ride. I'm going to do a highway test, um, and I'm just going to be talking about my overall experience with the Vitashi Titan 250. Well, guys, here we are repeating this portion of the video. I use my wireless microphone and apparently that microphone is not good 
at all with the wind speed so we are doing this for the second time uh, here we have the bike all gassed up now we have a little bit more miles into it I just did a whole highway ride you name it the whole nine and when I got home and checked the video well you guys can guess what happened anyways this is the Vitashi Titan once again so we are doing a highway test and hopefully this time you guys can listen to me a little bit better. I believe this microphone is not a stereo microphone. Uh, my apologies for that, but at least it is a whole lot better than the uh, other microphone that I was using. Let me uh, go ahead. There we go. Now that this bike has uh, pretty much broken in, uh, we have just uh, only 12 miles away from from 300 miles so it is pretty much broken in I can tell you that neutral is a lot easier than before don't forget to do your first oil change at 300 miles reason is because there's usually debris that we can't see to the naked eye inside of the engine when it breaks in there's uh, metal shavings and this is all normal that's why you want to replace that shipping oil from the get-go and then after 300 miles once everything has rinsed quite well in there you want to replace that oil again another thing you want to do with these bikes is to tighten the chain after the first 100 miles and then after the first 200 miles as well so first you do it when it has 100 miles you will notice how the chain is like super loose this is all 100 percent normal that it's called the stretching of the uh, chain and it happens to every chain out there well not every but knowing that this is a cheaper chain uh, it does tend to happen quite often with that filter mod, this bike has a lot more response. Uh, it goes to 50 miles an hour in no time. So that's definitely a recommendation that I can tell you guys to do is to remove that air box and to add that uh, K&N cone style filter as soon as you can. This bike is super lightweight. It's less than 300 pounds. So you guys can imagine how nimble this bike is. A lot lighter than the Kawasaki's uh, 300s. And then the Yamaha R3. And all those entry level bikes. I can't speak for the Honda. I think it's called the uh, CBR250. I can't speak for that bike because I never owned it or any other 250cc bike except for the Chinese one but I can tell you this one is super light now before you start cornering and start doing you know things that require good tires well I just mentioned it install good tires guys like I said before these are the Dunlops uh, Sport Max, uh, I think it's called the uh, GPR 300s, and they are 100% recommended. Uh, second tip or third tip, whatever tip I am on, uh, don't uh, try not to engine brake with this bike. It doesn't like it. For some reason, the uh, fuel injector cannot compensate for when you are. Uh, using it, uh, let's say you downshift and you let the clutch go so that it helps it break a little. The fuel injector doesn't compensate for that. And what happens is that when you go back on idle, uh, I guess it, it, it runs out of fuel uh, or doesn't get enough fuel fast enough and your engine will stall. I noticed this over time after using the bike. Now when I downshift, I don't let my clutch go. I simply downshift to where I need to 
and then um, if I'm if I'm going to continue accelerating, I just add some um, some gas to it. Like I'll just move the throttle, and that's how I keep it from stalling. Now the stalls don't happen as often as they used to. Sometimes being on idle like I am now, it will stall. So I just did those three things. I did the filter mod, the air filter mod. I did the uh, the uh, T map sensor. A replacement for a better one a one that seems to be better made and then third I did the spark plug the NGK 2202 with the uh, 0.030 gap and that has helped quite a bunch now I've seen uh, people with similar engines on other uh, models that uh, they uh, readjusted the valves and that also made a big difference even on power with these bikes now this one doesn't seem to have any valve issues or you know that it needs any adjustments but I wouldn't be surprised if you get one that does and so for that I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube on how to um, check them now if you don't know what you're doing then I will suggest 100% that you guys get a professional to do it for you. And uh, that's going to be your best bet, guys. Also, uh, when it comes to the brakes, uh, these don't have ABS brakes. So for learners, uh, it could be a little rough. They are very sensitive in the sense that if you hit it hard, it will lock the wheel. So just be very cautious about that from the get-go. Uh, you don't get ABS braking like you do with other entry-level bikes such as the Kawasaki's and the Yamaha's, Suzuki's and all those name brand bikes. You won't get that with this particular one. So again, be very careful. The rear brake works very nicely. As per the height recommendation for these uh, bikes, well, I gotta say that if you are below 5'4", so that's 5 feet and 4 inches, if you're below that, then this bike is gonna be too big. Now, if you are 6 foot and above, then this bike is too small. I am 5 foot 10 with shoes, so let's say I'm 5 foot 9 without shoes. And I fit perfectly well. I mean, when I rest my my right foot on the uh, on the peg here for the brake when I rest it my knee is bended more than I want to but it's not terrible it's not to where you know I'm struggling with the bike or anything like that it's actually uh, quite comfortable so yeah that's the good news about this bike it's very similar to the X Pro X24 when it comes to handling uh, maybe because both of them have the same frames the same seat height so again, I didn't measure the seat height. I forgot to do that, but I will leave the link below and on there, on the uh, Texas Power Sports website, it tells you, um, it tells you how, how high it is. But me personally, I'm telling you, if you're five foot four or less, it's too big. And if you are six foot or more, then it's too small. Fuel economy on this bike is amazing. The gas tank can hold up to three gallons and a half. And I can tell you guys that I had to fill it up from, from when it was brand new, uh, meaning zero miles. I had to fill it up at 240 miles. So I guess that's what you get with just three gallons and a half, 240 miles, that's crazy. My uh, CF Moto, in which I sold already, uh, had a similar gas tank, three gallons and a half, almost four. It was like 3.8 gallons. And here we go from zero to 60 real quick. You guys are seeing it on the screen. There we go. Whatever that took. But anyways, with the CF Moto, I needed to fill it up every like three days or so. Maybe four days. 
in here guys you can see that it can easily handle about 70 75 on 225 pounds let's tuck in a little six gear already so this is right now being tucked in you're doing about 78 I need to pass this car. It's going too slow. So we went back down to 76, now going back out to 78. Passing cars. Just keep in mind that you have to tuck in, otherwise the wind is gonna hold you back a little bit. So let's see if we can get it up to 80 with 225 pounds. There we go. We just did 81. We're doing steadily 80 miles an hour, guys. At a little over almost 9,000 RPMs. But that's about all we can squeeze on here. We are clearly passing cars. But if you do get to a situation where you need to zap it out, then you're gonna have some issues, guys. So there we go. We just did 80 miles an hour on a 250cc bike. That is not bad at all, guys. You see, but as soon as I got up, now the wind is, is hitting me a little bit harder is pushing the bike back. So I'm doing now 77 instead. But if I tuck in, we can go back to the 80s. The max we did was 81, as you guys can tell. That's very cool. Like I said, we're just keeping up with the traffic. Uh, this is I-95 for those who are familiar with Florida. I'm in uh, West Palm Beach And yeah, that's uh, That's quite competitive. I mean again as long as it keeps up with the traffic I'm into it. I think that the uh, X-Pro X24 Did like 10 miles less on the highway so maybe this one is geared slightly different. Also, if you don't want to be like, be held back on small inclines, you might want to downshift a little. Right now I'm on fifth gear. I'm gonna exit right out of here, guys. That was quite impressive, again, for a 250cc. So yes, I could have taken it to maybe 85 if I kept gunning it, but I didn't want to do that, guys, because again, it is just a huge risk. So we're gonna stop right here, right behind this car. Yeah, what a nice little bike, guys. So as long as you tighten everything, this is something that I can't stress enough. Tighten all your screws, please. When you get this bike, I mean, I would hate to see somebody getting hurt uh, or, or just hear that somebody got hurt on one of these bikes. They come with a lot of loose bolts, and I'm talking about motor mount type of bolts. Uh, even the rear wheel, uh, it came unaligned, and that could be dangerous as well. So you had to, you know, if you didn't know how to do it, I'm pretty sure everybody has a buddy out there that can be quite handy. Just get somebody to help you. Uh, line the rear wheel make sure you tighten that main bolt that holds the wheels in place uh, check your uh, forks if uh, if it came already assembled you know people are not going to do the same thing uh, you know be as safe as when it is for you so yes uh, you might get it assembled but they probably didn't do you know that that good of a job so just check it that's all i'm saying check it 
because on this bike I found like I said motor mount bolts that I could literally take off with, with my hand I found suspension bolts that were very loose as well I mean they needed like five or six turns before being properly tightened so as long as you do all that these bikes are are great another thing about these bikes is uh, tire pressure make sure you go by uh, the recommendation so that way you get proper handling as I said before I uh, replaced the rear tire from a 140 by 60 to a 150 uh, or I'm sorry a one yeah 150 by 60 I think it used to be 140 by 70 excuse me now it has a 150 by 60 by 17 so that gives it uh, that nice aggressive wider look on the tire itself and it also um, and it also gives it uh, better acceleration because the tire is not as, as as round as before it looks more like a low profile tire Here we are steadily doing you know, 75. Are we getting up there to the 80s? I guess I was fighting the wind earlier. And here we are about to get to 300 miles right there. So according to the manuals, we are literally broken in now, uh, or officially, excuse me, is what I meant to say. When I get home, I'm, I will do that oil change as soon as possible. Today is Sunday. Uh, traffic gets uh, a little faster because, well, we don't have congestion today. People are usually at church or with the family. And so the highway is it's a little bit more free. So that's why I'm speeding up a little more. Right now we are doing, uh, it says 78, 79, but I'm pretty sure it's between 75, 76. At a little less than 9,000 RPMs, that's that's still okay, guys. You can do that. As long as you don't redline it, you are on the safe side. Now, when it comes to a highway ride, I wouldn't want to ride, uh, I wouldn't want to ride more than 10, 50 miles straight. See, to commute to work for, for me, it's about 12 miles on the highway, and that's okay. But you don't want to do like 30 miles or 50 miles. That's uh, too much to be at 9,000 or 8,000 RPMs. That's, that's a little bit too much. And if that's what you're doing, then make sure you add some really good oil to your engine. And maybe add some, some, some extra for, for whatever the max is. I think it's a little bit over a quart. Just add a little bit extra. I think the max is about 1100 milliliters. Then add like 12 or 13 milliliters. It won't hurt anything. It will just keep that engine lubricated properly. I saw that we did steadily a good 75 80 miles an hour with my weight assuming you're 160 to 190 this thing is gonna fly this thing will probably do 90 miles an hour also keep in mind that I really haven't done any major mods I just did the air box and and that was about it so that's that doesn't um... uh oh There's oil everywhere, guys. Here we are again with the Vitashi after I lost my cap. Uh, immediately after it happened, I reminded myself that I had loosened it up. Luckily, it didn't fall off before when I was on the highway. Uh, we still have some oil on here. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. We still have a little bit of oil left. 
it actually lost just a little bit it wasn't that much so that's just luck but this is the cap that we lost right here this is where we filled the oil again I was just getting ready to change it until I realized that my microphone was not working uh, properly when I checked the uh, clips that I made so this whole piece right here is all full of oil you can see it went up here it's just a big mess right now the bike still starts and so yeah I didn't ruin the motor um, but besides that as you guys just witnessed it is a darn good bike uh, with the exception that I just made uh, a stupidity as we would call it but yeah I mean this bike is, is great for beginners as I said earlier you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on a new bike like a Kawasaki Ninja 400 or a Yamaha R3 and spend five six grand or seven grand on a brand new bike the most likely you're gonna grow into it um, so yes you don't have to do that with this particular one here and here you're investing about maybe 32 registered already with taxes and shipping and everything so yeah pretty decent bike guys well just made it back this is a continuation to let you guys know that this little M18 bolt did help with the duct tape and we were able to make it here it did leak a little bit but it was just like a drop or so so it wasn't anything dramatic I made sure that the engine had oil and yeah so other than the oil leak tremendous bike it just proved to us that even without oil it can still go well $27.99 actually there are $28.99 now that went up a little bit and in my opinion great looking bike for the price brand new and what's even cooler is that it has great style it can do highway rides so on and so forth so thank you for watching subscribe for more comment below share the video and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos like this and i'll see you on my next one